Welcome to another training session of the Cymatic Manager. Today we will see how we can establish communication between two Siemens S7300 CPUs via Profibus DP ports and how to exchange data between two CPUs. Before starting today's video please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more interesting upcoming videos. So let's start first we need two Siemens CPU with Profibus ports on both. As shown we will couple both CPUs with Profibus cable and power on the system. Now let's go to the Cymatic Manager and quickly make a new project. We will add two Cymatic 300 stations and can rename them as Master and Slave stations. First we will go to the hardware configuration of the master station and add a 7300 CPU. We can change the address of the inputs and outputs. That's it for now for master station just save and compile the configuration. Similar way we will add a slave CPU. If we double click on the DP menu appears. We can change the Profibus address of the CPU if we want. I will change it to 3. Now we will change its operating mode to DP Slave as this CPU will work as Slave CPU. In configuration we will add input and output addresses for the registers of the Slave CPU. First we will set the input memory address. I will set it one you can change it as per your requirements. We can change the length of the memory byte. We can also change the unit of memory as byte or word again it depends how much length of data you want to exchange. Now we will set the output byte address. I will set it to and click OK. Since I have a separate output module connected to slave CPU it will add it to slot 4 and change the its output address. That's it for the slave CPU just compile and save the hardware configuration. Now again we will go to the master station and DP master system for the master CPU and keep its Profibus address too.
now we will drag and drop the configured 31x CPU on the Profibus of Master CPU. If we use S400 CPU then we will add CPU 41x. You can see as I drop the station of the Profibus it automatically select the slave CPU which we are using in this project. Now we will connect this to the slave CPU. In the configuration menu you can see the I.O. memory address of the slave CPU. We have to add partner memory addresses which are the addresses of the master CPU. Here you can see that slave address configuration is on right side and partner of master configuration is on left side. One important thing to understand is that input of the master CPU is output of the slave CPU and output of the master CPU is the input of the slave CPU. Means whatever data we will write in the output address of the master CPU will goes to the input address of the slave CPU via Profibus. Now we will add output memory address of the master CPU I will change it to 3. Similar way we can set input memory address of the master CPU. That's it just compile and save now hardware configuration is finished. Now we'll add OB82 and OB121 blocks in both master and slave CPUs. What are these blocks we will discuss in detail some other time. Now we'll go the the OB1 of the master CPU and use two move instructions to move data in and out of the CPU. Now IB4 is the input memory address of the master CPU and whatever data comes in this memory will goes to memory word 60 so that we can use it. Similar way now QB3 is the output memory address of the master CPU and whatever data we will write in the memory word 70 will goes to QB3. Now we'll go the the OB1 of the slave CPU and use two move instructions to move data in and out of the CPU.
Now I B1 is the input memory address of the slave CPU and whatever data comes in this memory will goes to memory word 200 so that we can use it. Similar way now QB2 is the output memory address of the slave CPU and whatever data we will write in the memory word 210 will goes to QB2. Now we will download the projects in the master and slave CPUs. We will open the OB1 blocks of the master and slave CPU and place them side by side and monitor the blocks to see how data is moving between these two CPUs. We will open the OB1 blocks of the master and slave CPU and place them side by side and monitor the blocks to see how data is moving between these two CPUs. You can see that if I change the data in the QB3 of the master to 1, it also goes to the IB1 memory of the slave and IB1 memory data is also 1. Now if I change master CPU output memory to the 2 it also changes in the slave CPU input memory. Now let's do the opposite. If I change the data of the output memory of the slave CPU by 4, it also changed the input memory IB4 of the master CPU. So this how data bits are moving to and from master and slave CPUs. Now let's make this session interesting by modifying its program a little. If we give a digital input to a master and it will turn on an output of the slave PLC. To make this happen we have to do some changes in the ladder logic. Let's start with master PLC. If there is an input at I12.0 it will move 1 to memory word 70. Now as per logic this one will also move to output memory register QB3 of master PLC and via Profibus communication it will goes to IB1 input memory register of the slave PLC.
Going back to the ladder logic now when input I12.0 goes off 0 will goes to memory 70 and it will reach the slave input IB1 register as explained earlier. Now we will go to the slave organization block 1 and make comparison logic so that if MW200 which is input memory of the slave CPU is 1 will turn on the output and if it is 0 will turn off the output. Now programming is done just download in both PLCs and go online to monitor. As you can see that if I give digital input signal to master PLC at I12.0 input it will get written in output register in the master PLC and from there it goes to the input register of the slave PLC and by comparison logic it is turning on the output of the PLC. That's today's session. I hope you like it. Please subscribe my channel for more videos. Till next video take care and goodbye.